Hi everyone, my name is Faustine Ramirez and I'm a master tutor with Med School Coach. So today we'll be reviewing a Step 2 CK question in pediatrics. So let's go ahead and read the stem. A 16 year old boy is brought to the emergency department with severe right scrotal pain that started two hours ago after finishing football practice. He also complains of mild abdominal pain and nausea, but denies vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, chest pain, shortness of breath, or pain with urination. He is sexually active and uses condoms inconsistently. He has no past medical history and takes no medications. Upon arrival, his temperature is 37.2 Celsius, heart rate is 86, respiratory rate is 16, and blood pressure is 122 over 75. Examination reveals a swollen and exquisitely tender high riding right testis and a transverse lie. Elevation of the right testis worsens his pain. The right testis does not move when the upper medial thigh is lightly touched. After performing Doppler ultrasonography and urine studies, what is the best next step in management? So I'd like you to pause the video for a moment and try to work through this question on your own first. All right, so welcome back. So let's work through this question together. So the first step when we approach a question is always to read the very last sentence to understand what is this question actually asking me. So after performing Doppler ultrasonography and urine studies, what is the next best step in management? So this is going to be a management question and we glance at the answer choices very briefly, just in a few seconds, and we see that they involve either antibiotics or some procedure um, or surgery. So we know that it's not just management in one category, it's gonna be any number of things ranging from antibiotics to procedures. So we have to think about this question broadly when we're thinking about management um, to make sure that we think about both medications and procedures. So this helps us frame how we read the question stem. So after we've read the question itself and we've glanced at the answer choices, we start from the top. So a 16 year old boy is brought to the emergency department with severe right scrotal pain that started two hours ago after finishing football practice. He also complains of mild abdominal pain and nausea, but denies any vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, chest pain, shortness of breath, or pain with urination. He is sexually active and uses condoms inconsistently. He has no past medical history and takes no medications. Upon arrival, his temperature is 37.2, heart rate is 86, respiratory rate is 16, and blood pressure is 122 over 75. So these are all normal vital signs. So then we look at the examination. Examination reveals a swollen and exquisitely tender, high riding right testis and a transverse lie. Elevation of the right testis worsens his pain. The right testis does not move when the upper medial thigh is lightly touched. So let's try to synthesize this examination. Um, so some of the key points here, um, before we even start, is going to be thinking about what's this patient presenting with? The patient's presenting with sudden onset, acute, severe scrotal pain. So already you know what your differential is going to be here because this is kind of the quintessential pediatrics question. So um, acute scrotal pain, there are really only two main things on your differential here. The first one is going to be testicular torsion. And the second one is going to be epididymitis. Okay, there are a few other things on the differential for scrotal pain, but when you're thinking about a classic Bohr's question like this, these are really the two main diagnoses that should be on your differential for a patient presenting with acute scrotal pain. So a few findings from the history can be helpful, and then our exam is really going to be crucial in differentiating between these two. So some things that I want to point out. So it started um, acute onset, so after finishing football practice. So it started in the setting of vigorous activity, so that can be helpful. Um, there is some mild nausea and abdominal pain. Those are very nonspecific, and those are not really helpful in differentiating between the two. He's sexually active and uses condoms inconsistently, so that's also going to be helpful, and we'll see why. Um, and otherwise, the vital signs, I think one of the pertinent negatives is that the patient is afebrile. Um, because sometimes epididymitis can present with a fever, although not always. So the, the appearance of the symptoms a few hours after vigorous activity sometimes can be seen in the setting of testicular torsion, 
but that's not a slam dunk. And we're also told that he's sexually active and uses condoms inconsistently, and that could be more consistent with epididymitis. So again, not a slam dunk here, just based on the history. So the exam is really gonna be what helps us differentiate between the two. So the key features of the exam are that it is um, swollen, exquisitely tender, it's high riding, and it's in a transverse lie. So we'll talk about these exam findings. Um, elevation of the testis worsens his pain. That's also gonna be a key finding. And it doesn't move when the upper medial thigh is lightly touched. So this is a description of what we call the cremaster reflex. And here, because it doesn't move, the cremaster reflex is negative. So let's take a moment to talk about these two main diagnoses, torsion and epididymitis. These are um, must-know diagnoses for your Step 2 CK exam and your PEDS shelf, and I can almost guarantee you'll get a question on one of these two diagnoses. So really important to know how these present, and a lot of exam findings here you have to be able to think about and categorize as being one or the other. So let's review these briefly and then come back to our question and see if we can answer it. So testicular torsion first. Um, the pathophysiology here is that you get inadequate fixation of the gubernaculum to the lower pole of the testis. So that's gonna be fixation that occurs right here um, to the um, tunica vaginalis. So um, that big picture, um, the lower pole of the testis is not appropriately fixed um, in this lower part here. And so if it's not properly fixed, then it's gonna be prone to um, torsion. The clinical features are gonna be acute onset scrotal pain, um, profound testicular swelling and diffuse tenderness. So let's start by saying the tenderness here is the entire testis that is tender. It's diffusely tender as opposed to just one area. Um, and it's going to be profoundly swollen. It's going to be described as a high riding testis. So it's gonna be elevated um, in the scrotum um, compared to the up opposite side. Um, the cremaster reflex is going to be absent. So that's when you pinch or lightly stroke the upper medial aspect of the ipsilateral thigh, um, and the um, testis should kind of raise up a little bit. And so if it doesn't, if it doesn't move, that's an absent cremaster reflex, and that's consistent with torsion. Classically, the testis is in a horizontal or transverse lie. So that's called the bell clapper deformity. So that's shown here. So you see that it's, normally it's in a longitudinal or nearly longitudinal lie. Here it's going to be in a horizontal or transverse lie. And it's also raised up a little bit compared to the normal um, location. So we see that being slightly raised here compared to a normal um, testis. And so that is also called the bell clapper deformity and that's classic finding for testicular torsion. Another classic finding is manual elevation of the testis elicits worsening of the pain. So as you're lifting up, um, you kind of slightly lift the testis and you see if that elicits more pain. Um, the cord itself, the spermatic cord itself, when you palpate it, is not tender. Um, and that's gonna be in contrast to epididymitis where the spermatic cord itself is very tender. And, and then finally, there's no fever or pyuria. So there's gonna be no white blood cells in the urine and no fever, which sometimes you can see um, fever in epididymitis. To diagnose it, you're gonna do a Doppler ultrasound and you're gonna see either reduced or absent flow to the affected testis. Um, I do wanna point out that even if your ultrasound is not available or you don't have these findings on ultrasound, if you have the classic story with the exam and all these features on exam, um, you would still proceed with management because this is a surgical emergency. And so if you still have a high clinical suspicion for testicular torsion, even in the absence of confirming the diagnosis of Doppler, or if Doppler is not available, or if Doppler is not showing you the findings you suspect, but you're still really suspicious for torsion based on all these classic exam findings, you would still proceed with management, um, which as we'll see is an urgent surgical detorsion. So after about six to eight hours, um, you start to have irreversible ischemia. Um, and so you want an urgent surgical detorsion um, within hopefully six hours of onset of pain. And then that's associated with a bilateral orchiopexy. So that's where you secure the testicle to the scrotal wall. 
And um, this is often tested, this question about whether it's unilateral or bilateral. Um, and that's because the other side is actually also at risk. Um, likely the inadequate gubernaculum fixation is oftentimes a bilateral defect. And so if you have it happen on one side, you're at risk of having it happen on the other side. And so um, you want to fixate both the involved testis and the contralateral uninvolved testis testis as you're doing that procedure. So it's not, uh, it's unilateral um, surgical detorsion with bilateral orchiopexy is the correct management. Um, and then manual detorsion if surgery is not available within about two hours. So if surgery is not available and this is a torus testicle, um, you need to try to detours it manually, but that's never the right answer. Um, if surgery is available, you always wanna do a surgical detorsion first. So now let's take a look at epididymitis and see how that compares. So here the pathophysiology is most commonly infectious and often in younger patients, less than 35, it's gonna be gonorrhea or chlamydia, in older patients, E. coli and other enteric gram negatives. The clinical features, it's also going to present with acute onset scrotal pain. Um, here the tenderness is going to be more localized to the epididymis, which is posterior um, and we can look at this picture again one more time. So the epididymis is this structure right here, and so it's more posterior on the testicle. So the pain is more localized and posterior, whereas for torsion, it's more diffuse. Um, here, the cremaster reflex is positive, whereas in torsion, it is absent. Here, the testicle will be in a vertical or longitudinal lie, so it'll be still in its normal position whereas for torsion it's horizontal or transverse. So you don't get that twisting medially where it becomes more um, horizontal in epididymitis. It stays in the right position. You get relief on manual elevation, whereas torsion you get pain on manual elevation. And the spermatic cord is quite tender, so that's gonna be another differentiating feature. And sometimes you can get fever because this is an infection, although not always, and you will have pyuria. So your urinalysis will have white blood cells and your urine culture will hopefully grow the organism that will help you um, narrow your antibiotics. You might also have lower urinary tract symptoms like frequency, your urgency, and dysuria, although not necessarily. To diagnose it, you're gonna do urine studies. So urinalysis, you're gonna see pyuria, urine culture, and urine nucleic acid amplification tests to test for gonorrhea and chlamydia. So in terms of management, um, you do want to rule out torsion with a Doppler ultrasound because this presentation is so similar. Although there is, um, you know, there are some characteristic findings on exam that can help you differentiate them. Um, acute onset scrotal pain, you're always going to want to rule out a torsion with a Doppler ultrasound if you haven't already. And that's part of the workup when anyone presents with acute onset scrotal pain. Even if you have suspicion for ep epididymitis, you still want to rule out torsion. And then finally, management is going to be antibiotic therapy, and that depends on the age group, because remember, these bugs are slightly different based on the age group. So young patients, less than 35, we're gonna treat for gonorrhea and chlamydia with ceftriaxone and either azithromycin or doxy. And then older patients, greater than 35 years old, we're gonna use a fluoroquinolone, either Cipro or levofloxacin, or if that's not tolerated or the patient can't take that, you can use Bactrim, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. So now that we've reviewed these differences, all this information about the exam, the pathophysiology, the management, this needs to be memorized cold. This is a really high yield topic um, for both step one and mostly step two, um, especially for your PEDS shelf and step two CK. So this is really important to be able to differentiate these based on the exam and to know how to manage them. So let's take a look at our question again and see based on our exam, um, if we can differentiate which of these two is going on. So remember, we already said that um, the onset after vigorous exercise could be more consistent with torsion, but the fact that he's sexually active and uses condoms inconsistently could be more consistent with epididymitis. So we need to rely on our exam. He's afebrile, um, but that's not a feature that is present um, all the time. And so let's take a look here at his exam. So examination reveals a swollen and very tender, high riding testis, in a transverse lie. Elevation worsens his pain. So here we're seeing it's very swollen, which um, is more consistent with torsion, but you could have a little bit of edema with um, 
epididymitis as well. It's exquisitely tender, and it doesn't say that it's tender just on the spermatic cord or just on the epididymis, but the whole testis is tender. It's high riding in a transverse lie, so that's the bell clapper deformity. And elevation worsens his pain, and the right testis does not move when the upper medial thigh is lightly touched. So that is an absent cremaster reflex. So all these findings, um, diffuse and profound swelling, diffuse pain, bell clapper deformity, worsening of the pain with elevation, and absent cremaster reflex are more consistent with testicular torsion. So let's take a look at our answer choices and determine what the correct one is. So antibiotics are going to be for epididymitis, so we can cross those out. Ceftriaxone and azithro would be correct if this was epididymitis, but it's not. Ciprofloxacin um, in an older patient with epididymitis, certainly, um, but not in this case. Empiric penicillin and trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, um, that's not even one of the um, empiric treatments for epididymitis, no matter the age, right? So this is correct in less than 35. This is correct in greater than 35 year olds. This is not even one of the empiric treatments. It's there to trick you. Analgesia and catheterization. Um, this is again, just a distractor because you're thinking about um, the renal and bladder system, the urogenital system, but um, that's not appropriate here either. Routine manual detorsion. So Manual detorsion, this is a trick. Um, this would only be correct if surgical detorsion was not available, um, but given that surgical detorsion is available, um, that's incorrect. And then both of these urgent surgical detorsion, these are both correct. So the question then is, is it with ipsilateral or bilateral orchiopexy? And as we learned, if you have testicular torsion on one side, you're at increased risk of having torsion on the other side um, because of that bilat likely bilateral defect in fixation of the testis. Um, and so in this case, um, the correct answer is going to be G because we need to do that bilateral orchiopexy. Um, so the correct answer is urgent surgical detorsion and bilateral orchiopexy. And this is a um, small detail, but gets commonly tested. So important to remember that you need to do a bilateral orchiopexy. All right, so that wraps up our question of the week. And thanks so much for listening.